We're now joined by Lin Guo, who has had a very busy third year at the Florence Academy of Art. Lin, what were you doing this last year? I was um, I was on third year, finishing my own advanced painting program. And uh, meanwhile, I was as a student teacher teaching the first year program. But because the support from school since last summer, we started a program called the Chinese Artist in Florence program. So I've been uh, running entire program during the time I was uh, studying in Florence Academy of Art on my third year. That must have been a great deal of pressure and work. Um, I, for me, I learned a great deal from that. For, ex for example, time management and then prioritize things. So um, my personal like uh, uh, journey as an artist is like a lot of to do with uh, what link the past and what link the current what I want to do with art. So um, I'm glad it's working really well <laughs> together. So are you trying to teach your students more than just art then? Likewise, time management organization. Um, we talk about that quite a lot in our workshop. Like we not only, on, not, on, um, I should say this, not only me share this um, knowledge with students, also we invite some professors from Chinese University, like a fine art professor. They came and then they give you amazing um, question, like a answer student question talking about how they can do after they graduate and then um, of course I input quite a lot what I learned from my personal part. And of course now that you've graduated you will be living proof of what one can achieve. What's your plan? Um, this is uh, actually initially um, strive me to achieve the goal I am now today but I think this is definitely not a destination there's a long way to go but for me um, be able to uh, like motiv motivate other people and then be able to encourage other people. They don't need necessarily really need to learn anything like extremely new. Just look into themselves and then realize what actually they know about and what they can do, make them unique together for their art. And then uh, for me, like uh, I always talk about Renaissance art because for me, Renaissance artists, they actually not only about like uh, they realize they're individually human, they want to express like uh, not only about religions, they want to express their own idea. And for me, they actually um, having this great talent put together, like Michelangelo, Da Vinci, those famous Renaissance artists, they not only doing fun art, they do lots of like uh, architecture, they do sculpture, they they do like an anatomy study and they do lots of like a mechanic thing as well. Each single single thing didn't stop them being an artist. Instead, they're making them greater. I think for me, my realization on this is like only recent two years. And then I am so glad I bring my past corporation marketing skill into the current what I do for the community. Um, your work that's on display here tonight, has any of it been influenced by these great masters that you've just told me about? Um, I'm really, really um, glad to be part of this show. I think majority of the artists you see today is from the Florence Academy of Art, which I personally adore and grow uh, as an artist there. And then most of the, um, the skill we actually learned is not Renaissance skill here. It's actually the 18th century, 19th century, like a, a little bit more modern kind of art impact on us. But the, the thing is like this traditional way of doing classical art is kind of lost in most of our school. And then for me, be able to have chance to, first of all, this school is existing, it's such a, like, a amazing um, opportunity for most of the representational artists to be there. But after that, like for me, being part of the school is like a, absolutely an honor. Yeah. I'm not even your student, although I'm inspired. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be part of your program as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Mitchell Price, who interestingly enough has one of his works not on sale. Mitch, what's the story? The story is that I had a, my roommate, he was one of my very, very good friends, and he was going through a rather a down point in his life. And uh, I really wanted to try and capture that that sense of emotion because a lot of what we do doesn't necessarily have a lot of emotional foundation to it. It's a very technical process what we do. And as much as possible I want to try and capture that because that's a very, very important part of art. I mean that's what's going to ultimately reach beyond the picture plane and capture the attention of the viewer. And I tried to take it, well, take advantage of my roommate situation unfortunately and uh, paint him as such and um, 
and kind of try to capture a fairly melancholy mood and a sense of him trying to look past it and moving forward. And uh, over the course of painting him, I developed a new relationship with him and I actually developed a new relationship with his family. And his mother, who happens to be my landlord, fell so much in love with the painting itself that she, uh, we came to an agreement of sorts and um, swapped out a bunch of month's rent for a painting of her son, and it worked out really well. <laughs> Sounds like every artist's dream. Well, payment and trade is a, it's a good way of doing things for us. It works out really well. <laughs> and also, the space of your painting, you seem to be experimenting with light. I'm experimenting with light, with composition, and as many technical things that we practice and study here to try and achieve a sense of I don't know, a fuller sense of the whole. You try and capture a moment or you try and capture a person in a moment. And in order to do so, you have to really use all the tools at your disposal. And I don't know if it was as successful as I originally wanted it to be, but you kind of have to start taking risks if you're going to push yourself farther. And if you're going to try and actually achieve a sense of emotional catharsis with the viewers themselves. I mean. A lot of what we do is purely technical, but most of what we want when we come here is to be able to express ourselves and to describe other people in a more substantial way. And it's important not to overlook that key principle for the sake of technical virtuosity. And uh, I don't know, it's something that I'm going to have to keep working on in the future. So have you enjoyed being a part of this? Very much. I don't know. I, uh, it was a good group of people. It was a lot of fun and um, turned out okay. <laughs> so you'll continue exhibiting in London when possible? Whenever possible. I'm delighted. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you. Thank you.